A gorgeous morning. Let's play some softball from Harrison High School in Harrison, New York. It is game time on MSG Varsity. Today we have an interleague matchup in Westchester County. Two of the better squads in the area. And it's the Huskies of Harrison coming in with a record of four and one, playing host to the Vikings of Valhalla, and they are two and two. Hey, what's going on? I'm Keith Irizarry. Thank you so much for joining us. Alongside me, the call, former All-State catcher Carly Blake. Carly, these two squads, I mentioned, really good teams, and they continue to play very well. They're both very strong. Last year, Valhalla 2011 Section 1 Class B champions. They have a great mix of youth and veterans. And on the flip side, we have Harrison. Last year, 2011 League champions led by a 13-year-old pitcher. Should be an outstanding interleague matchup. Let's talk about some of these highlight players, and we start behind the plate. Maddie D'Amelio. Oh, uh, Maddie D'Amelio, fantastic senior. She's the captain. She's a three-time All-League, three-time All-Section. Behind the plate, she's got a cannon for an arm, four-year varsity starter. And her coach tells her she's the rock that the team builds upon. And you know what? She is the cover girl of MSG Varsity Magazine. What an honor for her. Oh, it's an incredible experience for her. Absolutely. On the other side, seemingly she's been around forever. Jenna Webb, what a fantastic softball player. Oh, center fielder, senior, captain. This kid's got an incredible bat, bashing over 500 with 12 RBIs and three home runs. Two-time All-Stater. She's got outstanding range, a great hitter. Coach says she's one of the best in the state. Yesterday, pounding out five RBIs in a home run. And she's top ten players to watch in MSG Varsity's The Magazine. Yep, Jenna is featured in The Magazine in the spring. So it's the Vikings of Valhalla taking on the Huskies of Harrison. First pitch coming up on the other side of the break. Keep it here. Back here at Harrison High School, the Valhalla Vikings taking on the Huskies of Harrison. And what a beautiful day it is. Temperatures are expected to reach around 70. They're already at 68 degrees. A little humid out, but no rain in the forecast for the next you know, 12 to 14 hours. And how about this? You have an eighth grader in the circle, Christina DiCarlo, and she's already 4-0. Yeah, 4-0, but a very low ERA, 2.50. This kid can move the ball around with a fastball, drop, riser, a front door, back door curve, screwball, and a changeup. This kid is tough. And the lineup she will face, Maddie D'Amelio, Kaylee Dimmick, Brandy Kuhn, Jade Fumarelli, center fielder, Danielle Maffei, Alyssa Lombardo, Sydney Holtz, Jenna Saldi, and Alyssa Colantuno. Maddie D'Amelio, she was our highlight player, a catcher, wears jersey number one, four years on the varsity, three years all league, all section. First pitch in the dirt for a ball. Right there, DiCarlo going right at her, starting that. She's popping the ball. Looks like the drop got a little out of her, got a little slipped out of her hands a little bit. And another ball, so 2-0. Matt D'Amelio up there, no fear. This kid is the leader on this team. D'Amelio, the right-handed hitter, takes another one, 3-0. How important is it for an eighth grade pitcher? Obviously, she's 4-0, so we know she can get it done, but how important is it for her to get a strike early on? It's very important because she's going to need her confidence. Though she's the leader as the pitcher on the field, she needs to get the, these outs quickly and show that she's not an eighth grader. She's she's a great player. Well, four consecutive balls. D'Amelio will head over to first. Our umpires today, there's Jim Berger behind the plate. On the bases, Vic Bonsi. There's Vic. Here comes Kaylee Dimmick. A left-handed hitter. Shows bunt. And it's five straight balls to start the game off for DiCarlo. And you've got an eighth grader taking on an eighth grader, Dimmick, an eighth grade first year on the varsity, batting 250, two stolen bases, four runs scored. Dimmick is a lefty. You're going to look for her to slap her bunt right here. Actually, she was a little late on that one, hit on the end of the bat. But you, you're going to see now DiCarlo go at her with a few screw balls to try to pop her up. Runner on first is D'Amelio. There's Dimmick. And Chris, Christina DiCarlo in the circle. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Popped up into shallow left. Going to be a tough play. It will drop in in front of Torella. So runner advances, none away, two on. 
see that it's dropped right into shallow left field. And actually, D'Amelio did the right thing. She went about halfway. She wasn't sure if it was going to be caught by Chiarella or not. She went halfway, saw that it was going to drop, and just scooted on into second base. Very smart heads-up play. Brandy Kuhn will step in, another lefty. First pitch a little bit high for a ball, and Kuhn, another youngster, freshman, two years on the varsity. How about these numbers? Last year she bats 5'11", right now struggling a bit, batting 230, but the coaching staff said, eh, don't read too much into a 230 batting average. No, you don't. You, you know what? In the beginning of the season, sometimes you got to let the cobwebs get out, and, and it takes a little while to get settled, but all it takes is one game, and your batting average can shoot up 100 points. That's the beauty of softball. 1-1 one, one count, pitch is high, D'Amelio looked like she was going to go, goes back, runners remain at first and second. Now you see Elijah Webb throw that ball back to DiCarlo really fast, if you want to keep the pace going a little bit, the most important thing here is the first out. Laces this one into left center, Webb will glove it, but one run will score. An RBI double for Brandy Kuhn. D'Amelio comes across the plate, and Valhalla is up one nothing. Kuhn did the right thing right there. She didn't try to do, do much. Try, try to do too much with it. She just goes down. It was a low drop. She stumbles a little bit coming out of the box, but just lines it into left center field and heads up running. She knew she could make it to second base and on with a double. He gets the first run into the game. Here's Jade Fumarelli, center fielder. Batting in the cleanup spot, takes the first one for a strike. Now, Jade, boy, batting 500, five RBIs, already two doubles. That's a way to start off a season. This kid's got power. To the shortstop, LeJudis makes the play, and one away. LeJudis makes an outstanding play right there. What she does is she looks back, uh, Dimek on third base and avoids the runner going home. Dimek looked like she was going to break. And you see uh, LeJudis just hold her there. She knows she's got a gun, plenty of time to get the ball across the diamond, makes a great play and saves a run. So a one nothing advantage for Valhalla. Here's Danielle Maffei also hitting the cover off of the ball. That is 615, four RBIs, two doubles, a walk, a stolen base, just one run scored. Laces this one out towards left field and we'll go out of play. Just a little over anxious on that one. She's got fast hands right, you see right there through the uh, through the strike zone. All she has to do is sit back, straighten it out, and she's gonna have a nice base hit. Runners on second and third, one one count on Maffei. Into the dirt. Webb will knock it down and keep it in front of her. Nice block by Webb. See, we have a deep backstop here. That ball gets by, and your runner's going to score. You've got to keep every ball in front of you in this game, especially with runners on base. One away, two, one count. Make it 2-2. Two, two. As a former catcher, is one of the first things you look at a catcher when you get to the field? Absolutely. First thing, I, I read the scouting report on the catcher. I look to see if they're calling the game themselves. I love to know everything about a catcher. Tapped over towards Scaparotti, and Scaparotti's going to eat it. Now for Alex, this is her first time playing left field, uh, third base. She started out in left field, played some first base this year due to some injuries, due to some other things. Scaparotti now will be the full-time third baseman. It's going to take a long time to learn a new position, but she did the right thing. She looked the ball back. She, I'm sorry, she looked the runner back. No problem. The runner's safe. Strike one on Lombardo. This see, is Alyssa. See, DiCarlo's now starting to settle down a little bit. She's moving the ball around a little bit better. The last two balls have been grounders. That's important for her. She's got to, let, she's got to trust her infielders to get the outs for her. A little bit high, one and one count on Lombardo. Alyssa, they call her Flipper. She's a big time Miami Dolphins fan. Over towards the second base and Brave Ant, the play to the plate, got her there. Way to heads get the lead run. up play, very heads up play right there. You saw the infielders were in a little bit and Brabant goes right home, doesn't hesitate. It's a nice ground ball, it looks like a drop that stays a little bit up, ground ball, Brabant in. Throws it home to Webb for the second out. 
And here comes Sydney Holtz. Holtz is a freshman. Just two for 12 on the season, but has hit the ball really hard this year. Coaching staff truly believes she could be one of their better hitters as the year goes on. It takes a little while to get used to the varsity position. The balls are a lot faster than oftentimes they see in the younger club teams. So she's going to get stronger and she's going to start pounding the ball as she grows all as well. Bases are loaded. Tapper to the shortstop. LeJudas steps across and makes the play. So Valhalla gets one run across the board, but strands three. We head to the bottom half of the first inning. Keep it here on MSG Varsity. Back here at Harrison High School, the Vikings of Valhalla up 1-0. As we head into the bottom of the first inning, Sydney Holtz, 2-2, two two, 18 innings pitch, 9 strikeouts, and has three pitches she likes, but working on a few as well. Absolutely. She's got her fastball, changeup, and screwball. Those are three vital pitches you see nowadays with younger pitchers that they learn. But she's working on her drop and her riser, which are actually very similar movements. Uh, you have to dig down very quickly and, and to move the ball that way. It's good pitches to learn. Batting order, she will see Ali Brabant, one of the better contact hitters in the area. Scaparotti, then you got the Webbs. Jenna Webb, Elijah Webb, not related, but both awesome hitters. Dominique LeJudis, Christina DiCarlo, Jordan Valensis, Kendra DeChamps, and Jenna Vaccaro. And here's Allie Brabant. Batting 500, has scored 10 runs. She's a lefty. Means you're going to see a lot more of the slapping and the bunting, but she has 10 runs, so that means she's getting on base, running, and getting, you know, plays, move, people are moving her up. They're moving the ball around a lot. Pops it up. This is going to be a tough play for the shorts. I'm in the dirt. And it was stopped at first, but not scooped up. It's actually a nice play. We got Lombardo. She actually makes an attempt, misses the ball, and you see Kuhn get, actually gets over there in time, just doesn't get a good throw across the diamond and uh, can't be scooped up by Saldi. Scaparotti shows and slaps it away. This is something you don't see very often as a right-handed slapper. Uh, you see it a little bit more often. Usually what they'll do is they'll turn a righty around and try to teach him how to slap lefty, but this is the first I'm seeing in recent years of a righty slapper. See if she tries it again. In there for a strike. You know, you actually see that a little bit more in baseball where you'll show the bunt and then do like the safety hit where it's just, okay, now I'm going to hit at it as opposed to just bunt it. Yeah, and it's more, like you said, on the righty side, whereas it here at softball, it's more lefty. 0-2 oh, count. Over to Kuhn. Kuhn steps across and gets her. Runner advances. It's Brabant going over to second. Scaparotti's done. Kuhn really shows a great arm right there. The ball bounces up on her funny. It looked like there was a little divot in the dirt, but she guns it across the play, and Saldi makes a nice catch. She could have gone to second base, but she wanted to make the sure out since she bobbled the ball a little bit. Here's Jenna Webb coming off a three for four day. Fouls this one away. How about these numbers against Croton? Three for four, five RBIs, two home runs, and of course, she scored two runs as well. Not a bad day. You know, it's something, it's okay. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Batting 563 on the young season in an 0-1 hole. Takes that one low and away, 1-1. One, one. Something great about having a lefty with so much power. This is something you don't see that often because these kids are gonna pound the ball to right field. You got a short fence in right, too. <laughs> Brabant at second. Good block there by D'Amelio. Brabant's teasing D'Amelio a little bit. She had a good good lead on that one. She was almost lined up with Kuhn. D'Amelio's got to be real careful, but she makes a nice block and keeps, uh, keeps Brabant in place. 2-1 count on Jenna Webb. Runner on second. 1-0 advantage. Valhalla. Webb gets a charge into it. Has a single. Dimmick charges in, it's cut off by the first baseman, Saldi. Webb is going to motor over to second, so an RBI single. Webb advances to second on the throw. 
She makes nice, puts the ball right in the hole between Saldi and Jimenez. Dimick make, Dimick makes a nice throw, actually. She may have had a chance at the runner, and the runner, hesi Grayman, hesitated as she came around third base. But what happened is Saldi bob bobbled the ball ever so slightly and allowed uh, Brayback to score. And here's Elijah Webb. Another girl that has been hitting the cover off the ball. Came into yesterday's game batting 700. Actually, of all the players yesterday, <laughs> had one of the weakest days. She was one for four. And you'll take that with two runs scored and an RBI. And that's still a very strong game. <laughs> Jenna Webb at second. Elijah lays down the bunt. Charging in Lombardo. She gets Elijah Webb. Jenna will move over to third. Interesting call there with your power hitter, Elijah Webb, who can... Like you said, hit the tar off the ball. And she made a really nice play at third base. Lombardo jumps quickly and makes the throw across the diamond. Could this possibly be a game where, you know, Coach Dean Marino thinks it is going to be low scoring and just wants to make sure you manufacture it's some runs? very possible. you got to do whatever you can to manufacture runs, as you said. And what you want to do is try to throw the defense off guard. You have your infielders back. Hey, let's try to throw a bunt down. LaJudas batting 357. She was two for two yesterday with two RBIs against Croton. It was a good day had by all for this team. Holtz deals the off-speed pitch a little bit high. This is a kid who will battle you every at-bat. She very rarely strikes out. She will foul off everything she can until she gets what she wants. Holtz deals. LaJudas line driver to Lombardo. Well, they call it the hot corner for a reason, but Lombardo gloves it, and we are tied at one as we head to the second. Well, this is how the inning ended. A hot shot to Lombardo at third, and we were talking about it. First baseman, third baseman, pitcher all wearing masks. Why? It's very interesting. You know, you see this a lot more. It's a protection factor. You know, in softball, these fields are much shorter. The bases are much closer. And these third basemen, first basemen, and pitcher are so close to the bat, you're protecting your face from getting a line drive right to it. Jenna Saldi will dig in from the right side. Saldi just came back from injury. And the pitch will get away. Very tall for an eighth grader. This kid's only going to get stronger and get bigger. And her coach thinks she'll be a number four hitter down the line. Two and zero oh count on Jenna. De Carlo deals right back at her, and she finds it, steps and fires. Real good defensive play by DiCarlo, and who's going to be playing behind her on defense? Let's take a look left to right. You have Chiarella, Webb, and Valensis in the outfield. Scaparotti, LeJudis, Brabant, and Descamps behind DiCarlo, who made that excellent defensive play, and Elijah Webb right behind the plate. Just want to make sure DiCarlo's okay, and she appears to be. Right there's another example why these players wear these masks. The balls hit so hard. You think it's 43 feet from the pitcher's mound to home plate. And these kids are getting stronger and stronger at the plate, hitting the ball harder and harder. You just want to make sure you're protected. Take another look at the quick hands by DeCarlo as she knocks it down. It does get a bit of her leg, too, though. Yeah, just hit off her shin, looks like. She still makes the play, but she's tough. She's going to stay in this game. The other thing you often see is chest plates that these pitchers are wearing to avoid getting hit in the chest. We've had many incidences where players have been uh, hurt or killed because getting hit in the chest. And that's both baseball and softball. Across the board. Got to protect these players because they're getting stronger, bigger and stronger, and the fielders are defenseless out there. 1-0 count on Alyssa Calantuno. Does a little bit of a fake bunt right there and swings through it. You see first and third base. You see how far up they are. They're actually in front of where the pitcher's standing, so they're probably only 35 feet away. Tapped over to Bray Band. She steps and fires no problem. Two up, two down. 
the champs had to go a long way to come back to that base. She was up in line with the pitcher, and uh, Brabant makes a nice play, and the champs gets there in time. We go back to the top, Maddie D'Amelio. She walked and scored in the first inning. So D'Amelio is now seeing five consecutive balls from DiCarlo. She really looks like she wants to hit the ball too. She's got this intense look on her face, as most catchers do. We like to get up there and be competitive. <laughs> we, we know what's coming. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, softball catchers are very similar to uh, baseball batters because they try to anticipate what pitch is coming next. They usually have a good good luck at that. 2-1 is lined off the glove of Ali Brabant, and D'Amelio is now reached base. Both of her at-bats. D'Amelio just smoked that one. That was an outside pitch. She just went with it. She didn't try to do too much. That's the most important thing you need to do here. When you have an outside pitch, you go with it, and she hits it right over Brabant's head. Brabant makes a nice attempt. Nice base hit. Tapped back to DiCarlo. So DiCarlo helps herself out. Two putouts by DiCarlo. Gives up one single. We head to the bottom half of the inning. Pretty exciting game thus far. Both teams have scored one run. We head to the bottom half of the home inning. Take a look at the defense for the Valhalla Vikings. And we start with Lombardo at third. We got Lombardo, Kuhn, Jimenez, and Saldi in from left to right. We got Maffei, Fumarelli, and Dim uh, Dimmick, I'm sorry. And Sidney Holtz is pitching to Matty D'Amelio. And the head coach for Harrison. There he is, Dean Marino. The Mount Vernon graduate, 1976. He's got a great winning record, 170 and 69. And we found out that you actually played against his uh, his daughter. I, yeah, Tara, I think it was his, his daughter played with a girl I played with, Tara Aldrich, 10 years ago. Holt steps in, got him. Nice play by Holtz, getting, showing her range, getting off the mound very quickly and making the play across to the Saudi. It looks like DiCarlo just hit the ball off the end of the bat and Cindy Holtz quickly got off the diamond, fired it across to Saldi for the first out. Here's Jordan Valensis, the sophomore, coming off a two for two day against Croton. Hot shot to Brandy Cohen, coming off the bag, real nice Saldi and she'll Make the tag with her glove. That is a bang, bang play right there. Kuhn makes a nice play. It was a short hop, gets it right in her glove. Throws the ball a little off the base, but Saldi making a heads up play, coming up the line, making the catch and the tag for the out. Outstanding bang, bang play. Two up, two down on two pitches. Here's Kendra to Champs. Really seeing outstanding defense so far. The Champs takes the first pitch, straight down the pike for a strike. Came into the day batting 375, four RBIs. Got a lot of young kids on both these teams. It's a, lot, a bright future for both these programs. And I think you hit the uh, nail on the head right there. They're programs. They're not just teams anymore. You're starting to see both of these teams slash programs. They're around for a while and doing really well for a while. Yeah, you start young. Uh, this is how you're going to continue to see their siblings come up, and, and you work, you're always in the program. You start, say, in fifth, sixth grade, and you work all the way up through 12th grade. As you said, you're going to continue to have success along the way. Holtz taking her time, toes the rubber, has her pitch. Deals off speed and high. It's funny, actually, before the game, I was... I got introduced to Jenna Webb's older sister, who's here with her two daughters. Wow. One is five, one is two. And, Probably starting uh, to play softball and already. They, they <laughs> were joking that they're the future Harrison softball players. Yeah, you start working with these kids now with softball. You see it start. I started playing travel ball when I was nine, and now they start them even younger. They didn't have programs younger when I was a kid, but now they start playing these kids in six and seven years old in travel ball. Well, that'll be a strikeout. The ball gets away, and the champs are safe. 
D'Amelio makes a nice attempt. The ball looked like it kind of hit off the heel of her glove. The champs went for a pitch that was way outside. D'Amelio just missed it, made an excellent throw. You see Saldi made a good stretch, too. First pitch, a drop into the zone. Second pitch, just a little bit low. Third one, foul out. Now a ball a little bit high, high again. And this was the punch out, but unfortunately, she wasn't fully punched out. Gets her chance to move over. First base. Here's Jennifer Caro. See Holtz move the ball inside a little bit. The most important thing for these pitchers is they have to move the ball around. Otherwise, the batters are going to pick up on the reads and, and start hitting the ball. Vaccaro goes down on three straight swings. So one runner is stranded, none across the board, still tied at one. Good conclusion to the previous inning. Sydney Holtz, three straight pitches, three straight strikes on Jenna Vaccaro. Sits her down, and that leads us into the top of the third. There's John Hayes, class of 95 from Yorktown High School. 115 wins, 47 losses. Eighth year as the head coach and three consecutive sectional titles. So really turning this team again into a program. Brandy Kuhn will dig in from the left side, had an RBI double in the first inning. See, DiCarlo starts Kuhn off with a changeup, showing a lot of respect here. Kuhn had a big double, first time at bat with an RBI. So DiCarlo trying to mix it up in the, for the first pitch. 2-0 count. A little chin music right there. <laughs> it's like a riser that kind of went awry. It's very hard to pitch to a lefty. And that'll drop in there. It's another changeup. We're actually situated right next to the Valhalla dugout, and I'm just hearing them saying, watch the change, watch the change. <laughs> the 2-1, poked out towards center field. Had some good left on it, and Jenna Webb makes the play. That ball just kept carrying. It looked like Kuhn didn't actually almost had a hack swing to it. Didn't get all the way around on it, uh, but it just kept carrying. And Webb makes the play at center field. There's Jenna, number 31, the senior headed to Springfield College. Stepping in now, Jade Fumarelli grounded out to the shortstop in the first inning. This one's not a ground out. Webb trying to get to it, can't. It'll go through the fence, ground rule double. She did not waste any time right there. Fumarelli makes a nice swing on that and just missed going over the fence. She, ball that went right over the play and she took full advantage of it lining it to look what looked like right center field and it bounced over the fence for a ground rule double. Just a nice swing. Didn't try to do too much and it went far. Here's Danielle Maffei. Drops it in front of Webb. Webb showing off that cannon of an arm. And holds Kuhn. I checked that Fumarelli at second. So runners on first and second. That is an incredibly heads up play right there from Webb. She lets the ball, she knows that she's not going to be able to make the diving catch, so she lets the ball bounce in front of her. The runner from Morelli has to hold at second base because in case it's caught, and she just guns it to third base, and Fumarelli is not able to advance. That right there, I'm very impressed with the play, uh, that play right, <laughs> right there. Here's Alyssa Lombardo back to the pitcher. To Carla will step, make the play. One away, runners advance to second and third. Carlo didn't hesitate going to first right there. It was almost worked as if it was a bunt. You're moving the runners up. She really did have enough time to check back to third base, but she got the sure out. Now we have two down. And here's Sydney Holtz. First pitch hacking to Carlo, makes another play, and once again, Harrison gets out of a bit of a jam. Runners for Valhalla stranded at second and third. None across the board. Still tied up at one. Hey, thanks for coming back to us. Bottom of the third inning. 
Valhalla, one run on five hits. The Huskies, one run on two hits. Really become quite a defensive game here. Pitchers are pitching well. Yeah, both young pitchers. It seemed like it took them a half inning to uh, to settle in. That's fine. And you know what? The, the hitters are getting on base, but your defense is really stepping up on both sides, making the plays that need to be made. Ali Braveman led the game off with a single, ended up scoring a run. That's the lone run so far for Harrison. Takes the first pitch low for a ball. You might see her try to slap here. Coach says she's not. She's willing to slap it, lay the bunt down. You got first and third back. Not looking for the bunt. Off-speed pitch, misses outside. See coach at third base giving the signs. Might be switching something up right here. 3-0. No. We'll see if coach is giving her the take here on 3-0. No. I'd say with the leadoff hitter, yes, they'll take, she'll take the pitch. Try to get the runner on. Holtz deals and paints the corner, three and one. That was a curveball, or I'm sorry, a changeup that curved outside. That had some nice movement on it. Just painted the outside corner. Three one count on Brabant. Make it a full count. Now Brabant's got to be aggressive here. She can't take anything else. She's got to look for something to drive. Half swing, did she go? I'm not sure if they're saying she went or if the pitch was a strike, but nonetheless, it is a strikeout. See, Holt just painted the outside corner on that one, and it's hard to tell. Let's see if Brabant went a little too far. Yep, it's a very late call by the umpire, but it looks like Brabant went just a little bit far. All right, Alex Scaparotti. The caller, Scappy, steps in, takes the first pitch for a strike. She grounded out to the shortstop her first time up. I like that nickname. Scappy. Scappy. Yep. Mine was Batman. Batman? <laughs> Who was Robin? Nobody. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> a 1-1 one -one count on Alex Scapparotti. Holtz deals. Fouled away. Good swing. Just a little bit too late on it. I like that, Tamilio. Cleaning off the ball a little bit on her catcher's equipment. Banging on the top of her shin guard. Scaparotti has played in left field, right field, first base. Now taking over at third base. Looks like that's going to be her position for the rest of the season. Hey, but you never know. Things could change. Two and two count. Now on Scaparotti. That's what's so exciting about softball. Could change at the drop of a hat. And she will go down swinging. Makes a nice pitch right here. Looks like a riser that just keeps going. Great thing about riser, you know, you see it at your eyes, all of a sudden it just goes way out of the strike zone. It's kind of hard to resist. Jenna Webb, a single and RBI in the first inning. Holt's giving herself a second. It's power versus power right here. It's the best matchup. Webb swinging at the first one, taps it over to the first base, and Saldi bobbles it, and Webb will beat it out. It's a tough play right there. You see, Solly has to come off the base, and Jimenez just cannot get there in time. Looks like the official scores are going to give a single to Webb because no one was covering first, so she beat it out. It could have been. It's a tough call. Could have been the first baseman or second baseman's ball, but when Solly comes off, the first thing the second baseman needs to do is get to the base and cover. Now we're going to call it an infield single. Two away, 1-1 one, one score. Here's Elijah Webb. Ooh. Oh, hot shot. She almost takes out the Dean coach. Marino over there. the photographer at the same time. We got Lonnie over there for MSG wow. Varsity. He's our cameraman, the still photographer. You know what she was trying to do <laughs> was really make a, she was trying to fit feature MSG Varsity's logo over there. She was just trying to have a see it. <laughs> that is called quick hands right there. And making sure your coach is awake. 
They call him Dino, and uh, Dino hopped out of the way. All right. 2-1 pitch. Make it 2-2. She did not like that call. was up in the zone, but she's a very tall target. Sometimes you're going to get a higher strike zone when you're taller. Here's the 2-2, little bit low. Full count. This kid has got a fantastic eye. She knows exactly what she's looking for. She's been intentionally walked five times already this year. That's incredible. Ridiculous. Ooh. And that'll hit her. Doesn't let it phase her, just runs down to first base like nothing happened. Well, she actually has a, a little, it looks almost like a little knee pad or knee guard on the left knee. It's hard to say what that is. Yeah, just went off her knee. It looks like it protected. Could be a sliding pad that you see under her pants. It's kind of hard to say. Most of these girls wear sliding pads. That could score a run. LeJudas out towards center field. Jenna Webb will come across home. Elijah Webb will move over towards third. And Harrison takes a 2-1 lead. Nice piece of hitting by LeJudas. She just runs it up the gap. Fumarelli makes a nice throw to Nemilio and just misses the runner at the plate. But when that ball goes through to the catcher, it allows Webb to move up to third base. Here's Christina DiCarlo grounded out to the pitcher her first time up. Runners on second and third. Good block there by D'Amelio. Teammates call her the pit bull. I like that name for a young kid. There are so many nicknames across the board for both of these teams. They're great nicknames, too. <laughs> they really are. And a lot of them have meaning, too. They didn't just come up with them out of nowhere. <laughs> it's a nice pitch there by Holtz. And Sydney Holtz, they actually call her Screech. You know why? Why is that? because her pitch is so fast. Nice. Slow tapper to the shortstop in the dirt, gonna get away. We get one run to score. We get a second run across the board. It's LeJudas. And just like that, Looks Harrison like. will have the lead. Interesting play. It looked like the runner hit the shortstop. It should have been an interference. That's why that ball went so low. We have the coach coming out to talk to the umpire. If a player is running and the shortstop is attempting to make the play, that is considered an interference. That runner is automatically out. That's why the coach even is if arguing. The, even if the shortstop is in the base path? Doesn't matter. The runner has to stop. The runner has to let the play be made. So right there, she should have held up. Instead, she runs into the shortstop trying to make the play. It's the interference rule in softball. It's a very unusual play right there. You don't see it that often where they run right into the player. But I have been that runner, and I have been called out many times. Well, nonetheless, Harrison up now 4-1. And, and that time you'll get the interference at short. So we will mark that as an interference at shortstop. At the end of three, the Harrison Huskies lead four to one. We'll take a look at the interference as we go to break. Back here at Harrison High School, Huskies lead 4-1. We're pleased to be joined now by John Hayes, the head coach for the Vikings. Coach, got to ask you, when you went over to the umpires over there, what were you questioning about the interference call? Uh, we were asking if the runner, um, how's the best way to describe this, whether or not the runner has to, uh, you know, give way to the fielder. The umpire ruling was without the, the fielder should have just kept going and made contact as opposed to trying to avoid it. And that's why the obstruction could not be called. So as you saw in the last one, our kid went right after it. And... Uh, here, let me just give a sign right here so we can <laughs> we'll, get going. We'll hold here. up for you. You got it. <laughs> but again, anyway, the uh, as you saw in that last play, the kid went right for the ball. We had we had contact and we were good. Coach, thank you so much. Go back to coaching, all right? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Coach on third base 
giving signs while he's in the interview with us. That was awesome. Oh, I had that happen earlier this week. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Jenna Saldi will lead the inning off with a single. It gets by Jordan Valensis. Saldi at second, and she will stand up there. Good heads-up piece of running by Saldi. She just scorched that ball. She scorched that ball down the right field line, and let's see, Valensis wasn't able to hold on to it, and on that error, she's able to move up to second base. Good heads-up running by Saldi. Here comes Alyssa Colantuno. I like Coach's explanation of that interference call. It makes more sense to me now. Colin Tuno tries to lay down the bunt. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, she, she hesitated. The shortstop hesitated, and by doing that, the interference call was not made. So the next play, she runs into her, and she's good. Got the interference call. This is Colin Tuno's second year on varsity, her first year starting. Now, she was just hit, thought she should have been able to go to first, but she showed bunt, and it's a strike. That is exactly right. If you are showing bunt, if the bat is a front of home plate and you get hit, it's a strike. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hit the bat. It is still considered a strike if the bat is in the strike zone. And there's the 0-2 to DiCarlo. DiCarlo looks over towards third. Couldn't make that throw. We'll step and fire it first. Interesting call again by DiCarlo right there. She only just briefly looks at Saldi and makes the play first base. It's like she wants to just make sure she gets the sure out. She didn't want to take any chances overthrown at third base. Saldi over at third. Back to the top for Maddie D'Amelio. Got to be real careful with our MSU Varsity. <laughs> Magazine cover girl, there's D'Amelio, obviously also one of our top ten players. Yeah, it's a great cover. You see her right there with all the Westchester Hudson Valley kids. Just an all-around great kid. I love watching her behind the plate, though. She really, her coach says she's the rock. She really is. I like that. 2-0 count, make it 2-1. She's very interested in animal signs. She wants to become a vet. I like that. Three and one count. Ash got to be very careful right here. She's going to be looking for something to drive. She's not going to be swinging for something out of a strike zone as a smart hitter. She's going to be looking for something over the plate. Yeah, just paints the inside corner. Wasn't her pitch. It was a changeup on the inside. You don't. All she would have done was foul that and probably hit her coach. To Carlo, the payoff pitch. Oh, what a grab by LaJudis. She gets the stop, saves a run. Makes an outstanding grab right there. Looks like her mitt just got caught in the dirt. She dives to her left. Emilio smokes this ball. And just the mitt gets caught in the ground. The ball comes out. No chance that emilio has got a lot of speed. One away as Dimmick steps up to the plate. Runners on the corners. Hopped up, is there enough room? Oh, good play there by Elijah Webb. Throws over towards second, and she's safe. D'Amelio, heads up play. Wow, you definitely don't see that very often. Tagging up from first base. That shows you what a smart player D'Amelio is. He sees that the catcher is not paying attention. Watches as soon as that play is made. She is hustling down to second base. The always dangerous Brandy Kuhn will step into the box first. We take a look back at this play. See, Elijah just, Webb. Yep, just relaxes for one millisecond. That's all it took, and D'Amelio was taken off. Pitch a little bit away. Ooh. <laughs> you see Saldi right there. Looks like she got a little tripped up. Webb looked like she was going to throw that ball down. Saldi went down. 2-0 count now on Brandy Kuhn. She's keeping a close eye on Saldi on third base. You might see a snap throw. 2-1 count on Kuhn. Kuhn, a freshman, plays travel softball. They call her Yuna. And uh, she, you know, she's one of those players. She, she wants to go on to play Division I softball. Out towards left field, Shirella will glove it and make the play. So after the leadoff 
batter gets on. Valhalla squanders the opportunity. The score remains 4-1. All right, we're back here, bottom of the fourth inning. Harrison Huskies up 4-1, and now we're joined by their head coach, Dean Marino. And, Coach, there was a hot shot over third base before. You almost got your head taken off. <laughs> were you, how were you able to get out of the way? She's hit me three times already. Sent me to the hospital once with a bad finger. Oh. Believe me, I am not comfortable up here when she's up. Wow. But uh, I'm sort of expecting that and that saves me a little bit. So, <laughs> Coach, tell me about you have a young team. Who has been the biggest kid to step up and take the lead on this young, very young team? Well, outside of our seniors doing a great job, we have our uh, Jordan Valensis is a sophomore, Jenna Vicaro is a sophomore, Christina DiCarlo is an eighth grader, and my shortstop Dominique's a ninth grader, and they had over 70 at bats now with two strikeouts, they're putting the ball in play, they're learning on the run, the Florida trip was such a big experience for them, we played some great teams down there, I mean, you know, and they're learning on the run, so it's been a big help. All right, Coach, stay safe over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> coach Dean Marino joining us on the headset down at third base. And, well, now his team will take their hacks. You might want to get a mitt down there. <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen it, but three times. <laughs> well, here's Kendra to champs. Struck out her first time up. Reached on the pass ball. Takes the first pitch for a strike right here Valhalla needs to buckle down get the defense so that they're gonna have their opportunities coming up off speed pitch misses inside Holt's taking a second just thinking things over seeing where what's gonna work best for her deals fouled away as a catcher what did you like working better with a pitcher who would take their time or a pitcher who gets on the rubber and fires fires I had, I worked with two different pitchers when I was younger, uh, one who we won the county and state championships with in Jersey, and she worked so fast, the games were like an hour and 15 minutes long. Ah, uh, well, there you go, Sydney Holtz gets another strikeout, and is number five on the day. making an excellent Holtz right here. She's doing a nice job. She gave had one rough inning, but she's moving the ball around with it drops. She's got a change up. She's moving, a ch she's moving the ball outside and inside. She's actually done a really nice job. You see five strikeouts right there. She's keeping her team in the game. This kid's only going to get better. A 2-0 can now on Jennifer Caro. I like how D'Amelio blocked that one. She kept the ball in front of her, hit her shoulder. What she does is you square your shoulders so the ball falls in front of you. It's a very tough skill to learn. D'Amelio obviously has it down pat. I think it's almost a mental thing, too. I mean, do you really want to get hit with the ball? Not really. Well, you know, <laughs> catchers are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always say catchers are akin to a goalie in lacrosse. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're the backstop, but obviously that's mm -hmm. the definition of what a catcher is, and you're kind of the backstop in lacrosse. and Both can change the game? Yeah. You know, ball goes past the catcher. I've seen many games where ball goes through the catcher's leg and runs scores. You know, especially with a big backstop like this, the catcher is the one keeping her team in the game. She's keeping the, Even when nobody on base, she's blocking it the correct way. It becomes a mental thing. Here's Sidney Holtz, deals the 3-1. Kuhn dives, fires, and got him. Kuhn really showing some really nice range there. It looks like the field's getting a little dusty. Now, it's the second mitt we've seen get caught in the dirt. Kuhn goes down, picks the ball up, fires it across the dime to Saldi. Nice play. Nice play. I actually think both shortstops have uh, looked pretty good. Really. Like Judas and, uh, and... Without a doubt. Yeah. I'm impressed with, actually, the whole infield on both sides have really kept uh, this game very close. Here's Ali Brabant. Take that for a ball. Brabant looked like she was going to slap right there. We might see it again. She was recently named Softball Player of the Week on High School Sports Desk. You can catch the softball edition of High School Sports Desk every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Here's the 2-0. That'll be foul, 2-1. Just got that look like on the end of the bat. It had a weird backswing. 
So what she probably got was the screwball right there. The screwball's got a very unusual backspin to it. It goes outside on a lefty, and if you try to pull it, it's going to do that little wiggle and roll out, uh, roll away. There's going to be no power to it. Here's the 2 1. Just a bit high. 3 and 1. Holt's taking a second, thinking about, all right, what pitch do I need to get over the plate? 3-1 over to Kuhn. Kuhn, gloves, and makes the play. Three up and three down. The defenses are starting to really step it up. We head to the top of the fifth. Harrison Husky's up, 4-1. Sports Desk is now sport specific. Monday through Friday, you catch a full half hour dedicated to one sport. Ladies, softball, you are on Wednesday. I'll take you through the week though. Boys lacrosse on Monday, girls lacrosse on Tuesday. You got baseball on Thursday, track and field, and so much more. Top plays of the week. That's going to be on Friday. And again, it's weeknight, 7 p.m. only on MSU Varsity, never on satellite. This here will be DeCarlo's 60th pitch. Here's Jade Fumarelli. She had a rocket double her last at bat. Well, she got stranded, though. That is foul. Looked like she actually fouled that off her shin, but I don't think the umpire saw it. That ball died awfully quickly. Got to run it out anyway, because if that ball comes back fair, she could have a base hit. 1-1 one, one count on Jade Fumarelli. Valhalla dealt with a few injuries, and Jade was playing first base for a while, now moving back to her normal spot of center field. An all-section performer as a center fielder, a captain, four years on the basketball team, three years of soccer. Busy kid. And let me give you this. I'll tell it after this play. Makes the play. Also want to give a real shout-out to Jade. Today is her 18th birthday. Happy 18th birthday. It's one, a big day. Yeah, one for three on your 18th birthday so far. Not bad. I take it. Not bad. You sure? I played online, too. Did you really? I did. That was a long time ago. I, was, I haven't been 18 in a long time. Yeah, 30, 40 years ago, yeah, right? at least. <laughs> <laughs> According to my knees. <laughs> Here's Danielle Maffei. That'll go foul. I would have been in uh, exhibition games, you know, preseason type of stuff for my birthday. I remember I went. I also had a game the day I got my license. Nice. Don't tell them I wasn't in school. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Oh, one count on Maffei. Launched out towards left. Shirella ranges into foul territory and makes the grab. That's an outstanding catch right there. You see Chiarella making, showing her range. That ball just missed being having enough length for a home run but uh chiarella gets all the way over makes the catch in foul territory stays out of dead ball territory and you have a second out here's Alyssa lombardo 0 for 2 on the afternoon her team trailing 4-1 High chopper. I'll tell you this. DeCarlo has done real nice defensively hopping out of the circle and making some plays. Harrison still holding on to a 4-1 lead. Back here at Harrison High School, bottom of the fifth inning, and before the game, I caught up with the athletic director, Patty Seligman, to talk about a real special first-time Dave Basso Memorial Tournament. While we're talking about softball, obviously, today, uh, big event, Dave Basso Memorial Tournament. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, it's a wonderful community effort. Uh, Dave Basso uh, was a district employee, a graduate of Harrison, and a varsity player. In fact, you'll see number 32 printed all over our fields today. 
Um, as maintenance foreman, he took care of all of our fields and grounds, but more than that, he was just really a true friend, loyal, respectful, work ethic beyond all others, and the uh, uh, community wanted to get together and honor his memory. When I was pulling up to the fields today, I noticed all these flags. What was that? Flags. Doesn't that look fantastic? It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, our goal is to have 200 flags up there. Um, our band has the distinct honor of representing New York State in the Pearl Harbor celebration uh, in Hawaii next year. And as always, we're trying to raise funds. So this is our um, field of honor up there to, to honor all veterans. And uh, flags are being purchased by family members to honor uh, veterans that have served our country. And a great job there by Pat Seligman. You see number 32 all over the place again. Condolences go out to the Basso family. Dave Basso passed away February 2011. Alex Scaparotti, first swing, and she's out. Good play by Brandy Kuhn. It's a good way to start off an inning. One pitch, one out. Kuhn is really having an outstanding game at uh, shortstop. She really shows her range inside-outside, can come up on the ball. She's got a nice gun, and she's very um, confident in her throw. Now here comes Jenna Webb, two for two, an RBI, a run scored. And we have covered Harrison softball at least once for three consecutive years now. And Jenna Webb, I don't remember her getting out. Last year in the <laughs> game against Pearl River, she was three for three, reached on a walk also, had a triple, a double, and I believe a single. I, you know, I apologize if I'm incorrect on that. The year before, I think she was three for three also. That's probably one of the best compliments you could ever give a player. I've never seen her get out. That's incredible. Now, listen, I know that she's gotten out before. Yeah, no, but, but I personally have never seen it. That's true. I mean, it... <laughs> and I don't think I'm seeing it here. High out towards right center field. Jenna Webb on cue launches a home run. She's three for three on the day, and now she has three home runs in the last two games. <laughs> wow, just an incredible shot. She almost, it wasn't even a pitch over the plate. She goes for a lower pitch and coughs it. I mean, that ball went over the furthest part of center field. Let's take a look at the swing. Yeah, goes for a low drop ball and knows it's gone. Goes to the furthest part of the, the outfield, just to the left of the MSG Varsity sign. Looks like she's aiming for it. Just an incredible hit. So the Jenna Webb story continues. <laughs> she is really an impressive player. She, she, she is the total package. A 5-1 lead now for Harrison. Bottom of the fifth inning. 1-0 count now on Elijah Webb. Jenna hitting her fourth home run of the season. And third in two days. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's just incredible. Elijah giving a healthy swing there, two and one. She really showed pure power right here. Again, Elijah Webb right behind her, just pure power. These kids are back to back, can can hit the ball out of the park. And Elijah looking at a few colleges, Springfield purchase at the top of her list. Something else real interesting about Elijah, I'll tell you this after this pitch, as it fouled away. She's actually considering, instead of going to college, She's really big into community service, giving back. She wants to head over to Africa and help, uh, you know, the causes going on over there. That would be an unbelievable experience for her. Shows you what a true humanitarian these kids are. As we have strike three right there, she takes a real healthy cut at it, but that's a very impressive thing. She'll eventually end up in college, but one year would be nice in Africa. Just it looks like the change-up got her right there. She takes a nice, healthy cut, just dropped out of the strike zone. It's actually a really nice changeup by Holt. Here's Dominique LeJudis. She had an RBI single and scored a run in the third inning. Looks like Holtz tried to use her drop, which she's still learning right there. The ball just hit right in front of home plate. It's a very, very hard pitch to learn. 1-1 one, one count. You know, Harrison has had so many changes on their team. Players not coming back from last year, players graduating. Yet when you look up, they're leading this one 5-1, and if they proceed to hold on and win this one, they'll be 5-1 on the season. 
good start to a season. It's a strong, strong way to go. Got with Judas on first base now. Here's Christina DiCarlo. Reached on an error in the third inning, grounded out in the second inning. That ball will get away from D'Amelio. She couldn't find it momentarily. Well, Judas takes a huge turnaround second base. Thought about going down to third. That's a difficult thing with the backstop. As soon as that ball gets by you, what happens is, is it hits and rolls all the way around. It's very hard to find, even though the ball is bright yellow. Very difficult to find. So runner on second with two away. DiCarlo takes that pitch high. It's 2-0. Oh. DiCarlo looking to help herself out, add a few more runs. 2-1. That pitch right there by Holtz had an extra pop on it. She means business. Her team is by no means out of this game. That'll get by Kuhn. A high hop to the left fielder, Maffei. And I'll hold her up. Wow, that ball looked like it hit a lip on the outfield and just bounced into Maffei's hands. That actually, if it didn't, more than likely, LeJudis would have been able to score. I'd agree with you on that. Yeah. The outfield slows the ball down, but as soon as it hit the lip, it landed in Maffei's glove. Here comes Jordan Valensis. 0 for 1 on the day. And that'll get away from D'Amelio. Coming through and scoring is LeJudis. DiCarlo will motor on towards second. And Harrison goes up 6-1. Right there, that low, the ball looked like it hit in front of home plate and just bounced over D'Amelio. She's been able to keep, she's been able to keep the ball in front of her the entire game, and this one just hits. It just hits over and goes behind, and she actually makes a good uh, play. Holtz gets there to cover the base, but it's not in time. LeJudas scores. Samantha Guarnero is in as a pinch runner at second base for Christina DiCarlo. 2-0 count now on Valensis. Guarnero, she, she can hit a little bit, but she's your number one pinch runner. This will be fouled away. Two and one. You oftentimes in softball see the pinch runner for the catcher or the pitcher. You can substitute at any time for either of those players on base. I was always pinch run for. <laughs> but you always say whoever your pinch runner is is tied to you. Can't pinch run for someone else. Correct. I had one pinch runner. Out towards left field, Maffei makes the play, but Harrison adds two more to the scoreboard, and the Huskies lead six to one. We head to the sixth inning. Here we are at Harrison High School, the Huskies up 6-1, and it was a game that we were tied at one for a while. We give you a little bit of the game recap. In the first inning, it was Brandy Kuhn getting things going, and RBI double Matty D'Amelio would score. Coming right back at you, Ali Brabant would score off the RBI single from Jenna Webb, and we're tied up at one. Into the third inning, the bats would open up for the Huskies. Webb had a single would score a run. Elijah Webb, she got hit by a pitch, she would score a run. Dominique LeJudis gets an RBI single. And suddenly it was four to one. And in the fifth inning, Jenna Webb leads the inning off with a solo shot. One more run would be tagged on, and that is where we stand. It is six to one in favor of Harrison. Big smiles for Jenna Webb, three for three on the day with a home run. Can't argue with those numbers. <laughs> no, and you still haven't seen her get out. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I personally have not seen her get out. Uh, we got to Carlo. She's had 67 pitches, 42 strikes. And that's a girl that actually started off with five straight balls to start the game. Yeah, she's evened it out a bit. <laughs> I would say so. Sydney Holtz, 0 for 2 on the... Well, I guess it's afternoon now. We started at 11 a.m., but 0 for 2 with two ground outs. Turned out to be a beautiful day for softball. I know, you were nervous. It looked a little gray when I woke up this morning. <laughs> the 0-1 in there. You know, actually, the athletic secretary, Robin Webb, 
was talking to her before the game, and she actually she said when she found out I was doing the game, she got scared because there have been a few other times I was supposed to do games, and the games have gotten rained out. A few of our games have been rained out. It may have been a Harrison game last year. Could have been. Easy play there for LeJudas. Shortstops, again, really doing an amazing job on both sides today. LeJudas makes an easy play. Makes it look easy, I should say. It was a nice hard ground ball. Quick, quick out. Carlo has really settled down here today. Now she's moving the ball around. She feels real comfortable with her dip, moving the ball around and using her different pitches right there. You see the screw ball. She's a very confident pitcher. Got two and one. DiCarlo going to take a second. Make sure she's on the same page with Webb. Nice pitch. Just paints the outside corner right there. Looked like a curveball or an outside fastball. 2-2 Two -two count. And I just want to throw this out there. I said earlier about um, I was a little confused. It's, it's Robin Webb's sister who was here with her kids. So it's Robin Webb's nieces, not, not grandchildren. Gotcha. Just want to, just want to make, make that clear. Ball four as Saldi goes over to first. Elijah Webb actually makes a heads up play on that one. If you think about it, the ball passes her. If she takes her time getting the ball, very easily Saldi can run to second base. That happens quite often. Popped up. This is going to be a tough play. Here comes Jenna Webb on her horse. And Jenna laying wow. it out and making the grab. Wow. <laughs> She is just hustling all the way, knows that she's going to have to lay out for it, and does. Sticks her glove out and makes it in time. I mean, she was almost on the cusp of the infield. Really. She's still got a big smile on her face. <laughs> just an incredible game. See the champs at first base ready for Elijah Webb to throw the ball down. Little snap throw down very, to first. Very close play right there. Webb really has a gun for an arm. If you watch, the champs is, is a right-hander, so she actually turns her body towards the base. Knocked down by LeJudas. Everyone's safe. Preban almost was able to grab that ball and step on second base. It was just ever so slightly out of her reach. So runner on first and second. This is Kaylee Dimmick. Single in the first. One for three on the day. One all count on Kaylee. You see, you can hear Valhalla getting real excited. They know they are not far out of this game. Couple base hits. Trying to rally right here. Webb is ready to throw. She is just eyeing those runners. The 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. Made a nice pitch right there. Don McDemick was uh, taking all the way on that one. Out towards center field, Jenna Webb will make the play. Valhalla now one for 10 with runners in scoring position. That's pretty much been the story. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Huskies up, 6-1.
are back here, bottom of the sixth inning. The Huskies up six to one. Joined now by Eric Holtz, Sidney Holtz's dad. Must be fun for you to watch her out there, no? Oh, there's nothing better. It's a lot of fun. You've gotten a chance to see, obviously, her and now your son. He's playing college ball. He is. He's a freshman pitcher for Bucknell University. And uh, actually, after this game, heading up to West Point to hopefully watch him throw this afternoon. And then you're going to be coaching at the Maccabi Games. How did you get involved with that? I am. Well, uh, it's actually a long story. I was uh, drafted to play uh, professional ball in 2007 in Israel and uh, have a pretty decent reputation around the county. Uh, and I was uh, recruited to uh, put together Team USA uh, going to play in Israel for three weeks next summer. That's awesome, man. Have, have fun with that and keep enjoying watching your kids play. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for the time. Bye-bye. Let's get back into play now as the Harrison Huskies will lead things off with Kendra DeChamps, Jennifer Caro, and then Ali Braban. And actually, uh, I believe we have a pinch hitter. Looks like yeah, Samantha Guarnero's out there. Holtz has thrown 85 pitches today, 51 strikes. Takes a big healthy cut on that one. Guarnero, a junior. Over to the third baseman, Lombardo bobbles it. And Cornero will be single. Will be safe. Call that an E5, actually. Yeah, they got the leadoff runner on. Hall has got to make some, uh, some fielding plays here. They still have another at bat. They're still in this game. Vaccaro shows bunt. Nice block by Demilio. Keeping that ball in front of her. Cornero at first. None away. Bottom of the sixth. Half a bunt. And Vaccaro's got a strike on her. Strike on the attempt. The bat was ahead of home plate. There's the 1-1, one, one. a little bit high. Two, one count, runner on first is Guarnero. Holtz deals, tap. This is gonna be a real tough play for Lombardo. Steps and gets the play. How about it? Outstanding play by Lombardo right there, she knows. That ball has to be barehanded. She hustles up third base line and just grabs it with her bare hand, chucks it across the diamond to Saldi for the first out. Good heads up play. That'll bring us back to the top of the order. Alec Brabant, one for three on the days. A single and a run scored in the bottom of the first. A little bit high to Alley. Coach tells us she's a big vocal leader on this field. Out there, but the runner will advance. So Guarnero moves over to third, and here comes Alex Scaparotti. Two ground outs and a strikeout for Alex. Dangerous spot. For Valhalla. You know, Jenna Webb is looming on deck. Got to get Scaparotti out here. Takes a 1 1. Healthy cut right there. Just pulled her head off the ball ever so slightly. Nice pitch right there by Holtz. Now she's hitting him at the plate. Moved it around a little bit on that one. Sydney 
deals, and off the glove of Brandy Kuhn, another run will score. So Scaparotti with an RBI single. Kuhn makes an outstanding attempt at that one. Her glove was just out of the reach. Scaparotti makes a nice line drive straight up the middle. Kuhn dives and just misses it. Excellent attempt at the play, though. 7-1 lead for Harrison. Low and away and in the dirt to whip. We'll see if Holtz just stays away from Jenna. Inside. Gives her a little brush off right there. Showing some respect. Webb's going to be looking for something to drive right here. Low and away, 3 0. Holtz is staying away from Webb. She knows that ball could go anywhere in the field if she gets contact. There's the 3 0. She didn't want anything to do with her. I don't blame her. So runners on first and second. She doesn't get much of a break here with Elijah Webb. She definitely has a lot of power. Over two today. There's a strike. Elijah's look, right here is going to be looking for something to drive into the gaps, get another run on the board. Oh, and a beautiful changeup right there. Just fools Elijah Webb. She was way out in front of it. Ball bounces in front of the plate. Drop just gets away from her a little bit. One and two. What we were showing you there with that replay too was you, you saw the way the ball just dipped and basically Elijah Webb's whole body dipped with the swing too. It did. It, you know, it, it's a very difficult pitch to hit. You think it looks like a, a, a meatball coming at you and you go at it like you're going to pound it out of the park and you just end up kind of whiffing at it. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult pitch to hit. Good change up is one of the best pitches in your arsenal and it's usually the second pitch you learn. The first being the fastball. A 1-2 count on Elijah Webb. Runners on first and second. And Webb goes down swinging. Harrison puts one more run across the board. At the end of six, Harrison leads 7-1. Last chance for Valhalla as they trail 7-1. Seven, seven runs on eight hits and an error for the Huskies. For the Vikings, one run on eight hits and three errors. And this is your game recap. Let's take a look at the recap. Holds for Valhalla, six-inning pitch, eight hits, seven runs, one walk, six strikeouts. To Carlo for Harrison, six-inning pitched, eight hits, one run, uh, and only two walks, no Ks. Kuhn. Big RBI double in the top of the first. D'Amelio, two singles, a walk and a run. And on the flip side, Webb, a home run, two singles, a walk, two RBIs. And LeJudas, an RBI single, two runs scored. Well, Jenna Webb has been the story, the player we highlighted top of the broadcast. So I think we picked a good one. And for Valhalla now, this is it. Coming up, last chance opportunity. One away. Nice play by Champs. She knocks the ball down, bobbles it a little bit, but recovers easily and steps on the base for the first out of the inning. One pitch, one out. Next up is Danielle Maffei. Had a single in the third inning. A little bit high. Top of the seventh.
Fumarelli takes it, 2-0. They have the right kids up at the plate to get this inning going. Here's your power. Coach tells us she's got a Division I arm to go with this bat. Nice pitch by DiCarlo right there, just going right after her. Nothing but the fastball right down the middle. Coach John Hayes looking on. Ball four. It's exactly what the, the Vikings needed right here to get them going. Runner on base. And now here's Danielle Maffei. One for three with a single. Coming back in the third inning. Team calls her Darth Vader. I, I love these nicknames. They're just incredible. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> a 1-0 count on Maffei. Good grab there by Scaparotti. Check over towards first, and wow. That'll do it. A double play by Scaparotti to end the game, and Harrison takes it 7-2-1. We'll step aside. Still so much more coming up on the other side of the break. Once again, the Huskies win 7-1. On a beautiful day for softball, the Harrison Huskies walk away with a 7-1 to one victory. They are now 5-1, and one, and really one of the big reasons why was Jenna Webb. She's with our Carly Blake. Thanks, Keith. I'm here with Jenna Webb. Three for three, a home run, two RBIs, outstanding game, offensively, defensively. First, let's tell me how your team did today. You had outstanding pitching, outstanding defense. What was the best thing for you guys? Uh, the best thing for us was the offense, definitely. Um, we got the bats on the ball. All of us hit pretty much, so it's a good day. Okay, you line one over the center field fence. It was a, a low pitch, actually. Yeah. What were you looking for? Were, were you looking to drive it out of the park? Um, not at all. I was just looking to make contact because the swing before, I kind of whiffed a little bit, so just went, tucked my shoulder and just tried to drive the ball. But kind of the fence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and let's talk about the rest of the season. What are you guys hoping to accomplish? Uh, we're hoping to accomplish winning more games, hoping to come together a bit more. Um, defensively, we're great. Offensively, we're great. So we want to stay that, keep that consistent. Um, looking to go pretty far this year. So, Great. Jenna Webb, thank you so much. You. And now back to Keith. All right. Jenna Webb, three for three on the day, had that home run. She's our star of stars, executive producer of MSG Varsity, Michael Lardner, senior coordinating producer, Marty Ehrlich, coordinating producer, Miles Rich. Today's game produced by Jeff Tart, directed by Eric Singer. Our technical director, Ellen Welch. On stats, Tony Savino. This has been a presentation of MSU Varsity only on Optimum. For more the high school sports and thing. information, you can three. log on to msgvarsity.com. Once again, for Carly Blake and our entire MSU Varsity crew, I am Keith Irizarry. The Harrison Huskies move their record to 5-1. They take it 7-1. We'll catch you next time.